Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome back to Africa Prime. Our guest today is Amanda Naya, the CEO of Blue IQ. And just before we went to break, Amanda, you were telling us about a project that you're very excited about and very passionate about, and that's the industrial development uh, project. So tell us a little bit about it and why you're so excited about this project. Um, the national government, the Department of Trade and Industry, national department within, within um, government, has awarded the province a license to develop industrial development zone around the Oartambo International Airport. And our first project at, in the industrial development zone is the jewelry manufacturing precinct, what we uh, affectionately term the JMP. And, um, and the exciting thing is that we will go out to market in the next two months um, and invite interest from investors to come in and partner with us to operate this particular, to build, operate, and transfer back to the, the province over a period of time this facility. Uh, what is more this exciting... This has got nothing to do with Aerotropolis, does it? Well, it does. Um, and I'll explain the, the linkage. But just on the JMP itself, you know, what, what one of the key things that underpins the, the program is presently we export a lot of our raw material out of the country, and particularly minerals and, 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 and precious, precious stones, like platinum, gold and diamonds. They go out, they get beneficiated, and often we have to get them back at a premium. So there's a huge agenda uh, nationally around beneficiation, because if we beneficiate locally, we extract and maintain the value. So you're going to be driving this process within Karte? Yes. It's phenomenal. And w well, but you obviously need people to be involved in, in wanting to beneficiate the various yes. uh, resources that you speak of. Um, so we're looking to, to invite partners with the capacity and the skills uh, to build and operate the facility. Have you, have you seen any interest being shown thus far? Tremendous interest. There have been a number of uh, missions abroad talking to uh, people in various parts of the world, I mean, uh, right across the globe, uh, and, and just great interest. We will be hosting an investor conference, and I hope that will happen in June. Uh, with some support, of course, from CNBC Africa. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, you know, that will be part of our procurement drive. Yeah. Um, and it's just tremendously exciting. But the great thing is that we'll build skills here within our own country, within our province, to do this beneficiation, to grow a cadre of young people um, that will be able to do the jewelry design, the whatever it is that you require in the manufacturing process, et cetera, to operate all these complicated machines. But we also, part of the program that we're running is to send students across to places like Italy um, where they'll, they'll train in some of the best schools in the world. And we will be funding that. When do you as expect completion on the specific project? The JMP will run in phases. Um, our initial phase will, we hope to turn ground within this calendar year within the next two years to have an established facility and hopefully then it will just, you know, that will be the impetus and confidence to it to grow and expand. Agriculture Waste and Energy System, is it the OR project? That's right? the awesome project. <laughs> awesome pro program, okay. So tell us about that because that also sound, sounds very exciting. Um, it is. Is that currently still underway? Yes, it point? is. Um, essentially what Awesome does, it, it's a green project. It supports the green economy. It takes waste material, and it converts it into energy sources. And there's all sorts of technology, technology happening all over the world. Uh, so it's, it's innovative, it's uh, pioneering, it's new insofar as, as the space is concerned. So, you know, one always anticipates this is a little bit of, of caution on the part of, of, of the general stakeholder population that you engage with. But I think it has the, again, you know, if I think back to the freight program, Three years ago, we didn't have a freight logistics hub program in the province, um, you know, and we kind of had to muscle the concept of putting this on the table. And I remember saying to my MEC at the time, I'm going to stand on a soapbox and sell this, you know, but it's become a flagship project. I think things like the green economy projects that are new, that are innovative, will also start to evolve in that direction. And you'll find in three or four years' time, these things will be, they won't, they won't be, uh, projects that there'll be a norm almost, yeah. you know. And, and they, what, what one seeks to do in, in these kinds of projects, and just to also maybe open up another area of work that we do, is to try and drive innovation. 
new ways of doing things that we've done historically, different ways of doing them as well. Looking to optimize the way in which we use our resources in order to create a more sustainable economy. But in, in driving that agenda, what you also want to do is you want to create innovation, IP within our own environment. Yeah. Because the way you grow in economies, you, you, it's, it's okay to compete uh, globally, cheek by jowl, with other economies. But where you start to differentiate and define yourself is when you do different things and new do things. Do you think that Gauteng is on the path of innovation and creating its own intellectual, intellectual property? Absolutely. And in what sense? Um, well, I think the first thing is that this government has, provincial government, has demonstrated its will to do so by creating the Innovation Hub, which is a subsidiary of Blue IQ. And that's situated on the northeast side of Pretoria. We work there in conjunction with people like the University of Pretoria, the CSIR, and a whole range of stakeholders doing things that are often strange, you know, and different. Please give us an example of what you're doing that's strange and different. Um, some of the things that we're doing is looking at biosciences. Yeah. Okay, now, perhaps in other parts of the world, it's, you know, it's a bit of an established field, but certainly in our environment, it's different, it's new. Another example of something that we're doing is there's a tree called the Moringa Oliveira tree. And we're growing this tree in this province, and we will derive product from the tree and start to hopefully take it to market and commercialize it. And once we start, we've got a plantation, by the way, yeah. in the northern parts of our province, and we've secured the land, and I can take you there and physically show you the trees. <laughs> so it's amazing stuff. But what we'll do is get it to a point where we upscale it so it becomes, we, we manufacture it's product commercial, commercial and becomes viable. commercially viable. Yeah. Once it becomes commercially viable, you can start to employ people. And I think there's a huge agenda around everything that we're doing to create jobs. Well, I mean, I want to touch on that point. We're talking about the economic environment changing. The fiscus has changed quite extensively. Uh, we've got the 2008 crisis behind us. But again, uh, we haven't completely walked away unscathed. What would you say is the biggest challenge right now? Do you think that it is just access to capital that is keeping us um, at the levels that we are now, where we are making a very small, uh, you know, small progress with regards to unemployment, but not a big enough dent to say, well, in a few years' time, we could actually substantially bring unemployment down in Kauteng. I think there are two things that I think are quite uh, important for us to consider in the future. There's a couple of them, but the two things at top of mind. One is our skills base. And I just think that we are not getting out the right quality and quantity of skill set into our, to service our own markets. And you know, we've compared ourselves with places like China and India in terms of the graduate population around engineering and the sciences. And that really is an area that we need to be investing more in, our young people, and building, as I said, the right kinds of skills. There, there are enough jobs in our economy, but there's an argument that says that the skills that we're generating don't match the needs of the economy. So it's about closing that gap, and I think that's a big job. Um, I think the, other, the second thing that I think is quite important is this whole question of innovating and gearing ourselves to a different level where we're competing on our own terms and we generate our own IP as opposed to, like if you look at the auto sector, a lot of the design and the manufacture that happens in this country is dictated from outside the country. We need to actually move ourselves to a point where design and, and engineering of, of compo automotive components and uh, assembled products. Amanda, on to a more controversial issue, I'd like to ask you what your thoughts are on the e toll saga and the fact that it has been pushed aside um, for a while until <laughs> it's reviewed. <laughs> and I, I, the reason I ask you this is yes. because obviously you are a very important person within the Gauteng province um, and you do signify a lot of you know, development and change on the infrastructure side of things. You know, it's a tough one because on one hand you've got consumers and you've got corporates that are going to suffer, on the other you've got this big debt overhang um, that of course is in the hands of the Gauteng province. Um, Eleni, I'm not, I'm not qualified to comment on, 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 on what you see in the media and that kind of thing. I, I tell you what I think about our infrastructure in our country, which for me is, is, is a more fundamental issue. I think we've got, we've got really great infrastructure. Um, you know, I've traveled to different parts of the world. I've sat in the most horrendous traffic in Bangkok and New York. Uh, we don't have that extent of congestion in our province and in our country. 
And I think there's a lot to be said of the legacy of good infrastructure that we've built up. The point for me is we've got to sustain it going forward or we start to lose that edge. Yeah. Um, associated with that is a user pays principle, which is a globally accepted norm. Um, so first principle, let's sustain the great infrastructure that we've got and improve it. So we remain glo globally competitive for our economy and therefore for our people. Secondly, user pays, which is a globally accepted notion. The third thing is how do we then drive an agenda that says every citizen in this country must, must participate in ensuring that, that we, we remain globally competitive? Because, you know, we, I've got young kids. They're going to enter this economy quite, quite soon. And I want them to be able to access a good job. How do you do that is by ensuring that you've got the building blocks to grow the economy. Exactly. So for me, it's about that. And it's not about the media hub. So 25 years in government, I mentioned that at the top of the interview, and a lot of people that I've spoken to um, after 10 or 15 years seem to want to exit government. You're still pretty much in. You sound very passionate and energetic. You mentioned you've also got children. So where to for, uh, from here for Amanda? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, Eleni. I think government's a great place. The one thing it offers you is an opportunity to make a contribution. Uh, a very direct contribution where the things that you do, you see the benefit of, you know. I worked for a long time in the city of Durban, 10 years. And um, even today, if I go, well, that's home for me at the end of the day, you know, I can drive around the city and see some of the things that I've had a very direct hand in, physically, approving plans, for example, and I can see the building, you know, Musgrave Centre, you know, they redesigned the center. They redesigned it once or twice since I left. But, you know, I drive around the, the ramps and I remember the arguments we had with the traffic engineering team that was consulting. So there's huge satisfaction that you get from little things like that, you know. Uh, Florida Road, the legacy projects that we have, the Gout train, you know. I mean, it always gives me such a thrill when I come up the ramp at the airport and you see the, the train. Or if you're driving to Centurion and you see the, the fly over, yeah. it's just amazing, you know. And I'm not sure that you get that sort of satisfaction anywhere else. Um, but I guess everybody changes and life changes and your needs, et cetera, change. And, you know, who knows where to from here. Fantastic, Amanda. Thank you so very much for your time and your contribution to Gauteng's and South Africa's economy. That was Amanda Naya, the CEO of Blue IQ. And that's it for this edition of Africa Prime. We'll see you next week.